Hi, I'm Jay Sung with the Marketing Minute. Uh, today, we're highlighting Brentwood portfolio companies and some of the exciting things that they've been doing. Today, we're talking about the consumerification of healthcare, and we're with Adam Arnett, the Chief Marketing Officer of one of our portfolio companies, Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics. How's it going, Adam? Hey, Jay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Well, first off, I'd love to just hear a little bit more about your background and some of your experience in marketing healthcare. You bet, absolutely. So, uh, well, so first I'm the chief marketing officer currently at Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics. But prior to that, I come from a, you know, an entrepreneurial background, but primarily over the last decade, part of teams building uh, direct consumer healthcare companies from uh, spine care to uh, migraine treatment, among other things. So, you know, through that process uh, and then into a, a biotech venture is obviously how I uh, came into contact with you guys and wound up here with Jefferson Dental in Dallas. So, you know, it's been quite a journey and, uh, you know, Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics, uh, the company itself has been around for a long time, right? So we started back in Dallas in 1967 and the, the premise behind our business at the time or the, the founder at the time was you know, he identified communities that were underserved in dental care and so, or, or had little access. And so that's how he began to build the, the business one location at a time. And then here we are 54 plus years later with over 70 offices throughout Texas and Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Jefferson's been on quite a, quite a journey over the last few years. Uh, maybe just... <laughs> I'm sure we could fill an hour and a half on that, but why, why don't you talk a little bit about what what you started with within the organization? Most marketers out there can identify with kind of a change mission within an organization, and certainly there have been some incredible changes happening over at Jefferson. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, one way we talk about it is internally when, uh, you know, the new team came in here a few years ago is, you know, the well, well first, the the brand 54 plus years old, so established in the community, however, it had not evolved uh, with the communities that it served. And so the running joke over the past few years with the management team was, hey, we're in, we're kind of part of a 54 year old startup. And so, uh, <laughs> because that the brand had to evolve, right? And, and, and to evolve, I mean, it had not evolved uh, fr from a marketing and brand standpoint, certainly, but more importantly, it not, it had not evolved to take care of the, the patient's changing needs. And so, you know, previously the, the business was very transactional, right? It was, uh, we had a lot of traffic, uh, which is a, a great thing for any business. So a lot of patient volume coming through our offices, but it was very transactional, you know, sit in the waiting room for a long time. If you're a patient, get, as much treatment done with that patient that day that we can and get to the next one and hope that that patient came back in the future, maybe, right? So the, the concept of, of lifetime value and building um, a relationship with the uh, patient was non-existent. So, you know, so couple that with weak branding, um, again, branding that had not evolved, zero digital uh, presence, Again, it was just a, uh, it was a value proposition that was based on discounts, heavy discounts to drive that traffic, uh, no patient experience. And, and, and the other thing is over that time period, the culture eroded along with the brand, right? Because there wasn't a whole lot of meaning in what was being delivered to the patient, you know? So that's, that was kind of what we came into and, and, and the, the direction the brand had gone. And we knew that, okay, there's a, there are a lot of things that have to be changed here, uh, not just the marketing, right? The marketing is, is simply just one uh, piece of the puzzle, but we knew we had to evolve to um, take care of that customer, right? The, the customer base had completely changed in many of our locations. Uh, again, you have a, a brand that's been around for over 50 years. You have neighborhoods that have uh, changed drastically, and we were still messaging to the neighborhood from 50 years ago. And so we looked at that, but the bigger picture was how could we take care, uh, how, how can we do a better job? How, how can we become the best in the dental industry? And looking throughout the industry, quite frankly, we weren't 
seeing anyone that could kind of be a, a, a North Star or a guide for us to shoot for and how we evolve the business. And what we quickly found is, you know, we, we found some good attributes of other dental providers in the community. Some had nice slick branding, others were very provider focused. We didn't find anyone that comprehensively was focused on the patient holistically. And what I mean by that is most dental practices are very um, siloed. You have, you know, a, a general dentistry practice and you might have hygiene there. And most of the time you have an orthodontist down the street practicing separately, or even if they are in the same practice, uh, they, they work in silos. They might as well be separate businesses. And so we saw that is the opportunity for how this brand evolves because what the patient wants, what we found out by uh, talking with our patients is they really would like to have it all in one place with a team approach, but that's really not done anywhere in dentistry. So that was kind of the, the foundation that we uh, landed on to continue to evolve the brand around that, taking care of and offering our patients comprehensive oral health care, uh, general dentistry, orthodontics and hygiene all under one roof. And, and so that's the foundation that we're moving forward with uh, is a brand. Right, right. And one thing that's really impressed me in addition to the focus on the brand and patient experience is how you've applied kind of a direct-to-consumer playbook to really a, a, a business that you kind of don't think of as a direct-to-consumer mm -hmm. thing, right? Think of a, your doctor's office. It could, could not be the farthest thing away from a you know, dollar shave club or something like that. But uh, maybe, maybe we touch on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think first it did start with, you know, there was the foundation of what we offer, you know, what is the service that we're going to deliver? Because that's the product, right? And then we reverse engineered the patient experience. Um, but then that all tied back to ultimately uh, our marketing strategy. And so from a direct consumer approach, and, and again, the brand previously was very discount driven, but so we took all of the the value propositions and promises that we knew we uh, could deliver to our patient. And that's that's how we ultimately built the, the strategy from a, a direct consumer perspective. But I, I think before what it looked like was community events, you know, um, an occasional direct mail piece. And we, we transitioned that into a comprehensive omni-channel approach. So, um, one, we, we know as marketers, we have to be where our consumers are. So the digital approach was the, the obvious low hanging fruit there. But uh, not only that, though, building out that comprehensive journey through uh, the technology, the marketing automation platforms that we've also added uh, into the business and the tech stack to support it. Um, so, you know, not only from educating our patients on um, uh, where we are and what we do from a hyper-local standpoint, but uh, taking that approach of the value proposition, sharing that in an omni-channel way uh, to show what we offer as a service, what we can deliver, um, and then the journeys that we've built through marketing automation from not only the digital platforms, but also still uh, offline direct mail, TV, radio, uh, coupled with uh, highly targeted Facebook ads, Instagram, et cetera, right? And so that's really helped uh, from a uh, funnel perspective, continue to acquire patients very effectively and, and, and start to build that lifetime value back that was missing from the business. Right, right. Um, I mean, Adam, based on your experience with, with healthcare uh, and you, you have visibility in a lot of different kinds of healthcare businesses out there, I mean, what, what role does marketing typically play in a healthcare company and, and what's unique about the role that, that it plays at, at Jefferson? Yeah, that's, so that's, that's a good one. You know, I, I think the problem that a lot of healthcare companies have, um, historically, it was the approach of if you have a big, nice facility or nice dental office, the patients are just going to show up, right? And 20 years ago, maybe that was the case, but no longer. In fact, I, I, it's been a couple of years, but I had a conversation with the CMO of Mayo Clinic, and we were talking about the, the business at the time and, and what he was doing, and he, and he told me, he said, you know, 
we've been around for over a hundred years and we're just now starting to figure out that we actually have to market to our patients or they're going to go yeah. elsewhere. And, you know, that's, that's where the, you know, consumer side, um, of healthcare has changed drastically. Patients are educated and they know they have a choice. And so, uh, even if you're Mayo Clinic, it doesn't mean that the patients are just going to come because they're being educated and being communicated to by other brands who are communicating messages that will meet their needs. And so, you know, so that's, that's one big difference and it's still a, a challenge in healthcare. Um, patients, healthcare organizations talk about patient experience, but they speak about it from the clinical perspective and they forget about all of those other soft touch points that actually uh, create and wrap around the clinical experience, creating the, the holistic uh, patient experience or, or customer experience. And within our organization, you know, I always talk about, hey, look, let's, let's make this real simple, especially if you come from healthcare, uh, a brand that does things really well from a, a customer experience standpoint is Chick-fil-A. And, you know, if we can deliver that type of seamless experience, obviously what we do is much more complex than delivering a chicken sandwich. But if, if we can create that experience that is that um, well run and, and, and creates this great feeling from the end consumer when they're done with the process, you know, we're doing a great job and we're gonna build lifetime value with those patients. Well, you know, that's very, very well put. I mean, is there a, uh, I guess, a favorite tactic or tool or result that you can think of, Adam, that you can share with folks that uh, maybe they could help, they could implement in their in their marketing somehow? Yeah, I think uh, I think one that's big picture that's not not so much tool, but it's it's strategy high level. Uh, because I've seen this over and over throughout my career in organizations is it's easy for a marketing team to become siloed within the organization. And I think some of the best marketing that can be done is to be uh, very well integrated with all of the functional groups within the organization because marketing can't, you know, I, we talk internally about, you know, marketing isn't really the, um, all the, the dollars we spend and, and Facebook and TV and, you know, those are, those are the fun things and we can always do better tactically and continue to optimize and improve those things. But at the end of the day, our, our brand is what we deliver to the end consumer, especially in healthcare, right? It's, it takes the team to be able to, to uh, deliver that brand promise. And so ongoing constant communication and integration with all of the functional groups within the organization are critical. So that would be the first one, you know, avoid siloing your team. Your team has to be integrated with the rest of the organization. And that's daily work doing that every day because everybody kind of wants to always default to their sandbox. Uh, but if you become a key part of that team, they're going to quickly see the value and you're going to be able to deliver much better to your customer. So I think that's one. And then, you know, uh, from marketing tactic standpoint, I would say, uh, look, omni-channel approach, you know, it, it is the key to showing up where your customer is. And so we have partners, um, we have a great team internally, but we work with great external partners and agencies as well um, that are very integrated with uh, with our, our team and our objectives and our actually our overall strategic plan. And so that helps inform that omni-channel approach by sharing that strategic plan with them. Uh, it informs, you know, all the way through our ad campaigns, creative messaging um, and, and tactics that they use for us to continue to optimize conversion. So that, that, that would be the other, uh, the other thing I would mention. Wow. Yeah, well, tremendous. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, to Adam Arnett from uh, Brentwood Company, Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics. Uh, thanks for your time today. You bet, Jay. Thanks a lot. Enjoyed it. <laughs>